Several data sources exist for these data types. Some of the key sources include census, vital records, disease registries, communicable disease reporting, surveys, and healthcare utilization administrative data. I'll now describe these sources and provide some key information toward using them in public health practice. Census data is generated by the U.S. Census Bureau every 10 years. It includes detailed information for all persons in the U.S., generating population numbers, the composition of the population, and housing characteristics. Basically, we use census data in our calculations as the denominator, or the population at risk. The American Community Survey is an ongoing annual survey sent to a sample of the total U.S. population. Results from this survey provide intercensal estimates of the population size and composition, as well as housing, both from the financial perspective, like estimates of the cost of utilities, and physical perspective, like the average number of bedrooms. Vital records are records of life events kept under governmental authority. They include records of deaths, births, fetal deaths, marriage, and divorce. I'd like to talk now about the International Classification of Disease, or ICD. I bring this up because we're talking about vital records data, and cause of death coding uses ICD. The main purpose of ICD coding is to enhance comparability across states and countries with respect to health outcomes. The World Health Organization publishes 16 chapters according to specified diseases area and a 17th chapter relating to external causes of injuries and poisonings. Periodically, it is revised, with the most recent revision being ICD-10. While we use this revision for classifying cause of death, hospitalization and emergency department diagnoses are still classified using the ninth revision. The limitations of vital records data are rooted in the variability of reporting. With multiple persons reporting information, the completeness and accuracy of the data can be compromised. Some of the measures, like maternal smoking during pregnancy, have poor validity given the biases in reporting this information. Also, there are potential issues in identifying mortality trends due to trends in assigning cause of death. When more is learned about certain disease outcomes, like Alzheimer's disease, the cause of death can be assigned with greater accuracy, which may in turn affect its assignment as a cause of death. Rates of Alzheimer's death may be increasing because we can better identify an Alzheimer's death. Registries contain a complete collection of health events. They are maintained for diseases like cancer, procedures like immunization, or even exposures like hazardous substances. There are limitations of registry data though. There may be extreme reporting delays or completeness issues with data submitted to the registry. There are also issues regarding the accuracy of the data, where what is reported is unreliable. Finally, there are issues regarding what health events are reliably reported. Melanoma, for instance, is often underreported in the cancer registry. Communicable disease reporting tracks the number of cases of communicable diseases according to strict definitions. It varies by state, since the authority to require notification of cases of disease resides in the respective state legislatures. The purpose of this data is to identify outbreaks and epidemics, to enable preventive treatment and or education to be provided, to help target prevention programs, identify care needs, and use scarce prevention resources efficiently to evaluate the success of long-term control efforts, to facilitate epidemiologic research to uncover a preventable cause, to assist with national and international disease surveillance efforts. There are a variety of state-based population surveys. I'll go through a few of the most recognizable ones here. The Behavioral Risk Factor Survey is a survey of adults 18 and over to generate the frequency of risk factors, health behaviors, and some diseases like asthma. Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring System, or PRAMS, 
is a survey of women with a live birth to assess risk factors related to birth outcomes. The Youth Risk Behavior Survey, or YRBS, is similar to the BRFS in that it measures the frequency of risk factors, health behaviors, and some diseases, but its study population includes high school children. A few words of caution I'd like to share with you about surveys. First, many surveys are conducted at the state level, and therefore, estimates are not available at the local level. In the same way, some national surveys cannot provide state-level estimates. The sample size is simply not large enough to generate estimates at smaller geographic units. There are also issues related to the data collection itself. Self-report data can lead to misclassification and even biases in results when what is reported is not valid. Cross-sectional data, as you'll see later in this course, is collected at a single point in time and cannot reflect changes over time or generate risk estimates. Many surveys utilize complex sampling designs, which makes analysis and interpretation more challenging. And finally, the modes of data collection can introduce bias. For example, the BRFS survey is a random digit dial survey of U.S. landline phone numbers. If someone does not have a phone or only has a cell phone, they do not have a chance to be included in the survey population. This can introduce bias. Estimates of disease prevalence in the population surveyed by the BRFS may be biased upwards since the survey does not capture adults living in cell phone only households who tend to be younger persons. Administrative data offers a fantastic source for public health data about healthcare utilization as either a risk factor or an outcome. You can get this data from facilities themselves, like a hospital, a health plan, or national data sets. Many data types are potentially available from administrative data, like pharmacy records, office visits, lab tests and procedures, emergency department visits, or hospitalizations. The major caveat to this data is that it was not collected for the purpose of public health surveillance or program planning. Its purpose is to create a bill and get it paid. Therefore, there are limitations and implications for interpreting this data. Let's talk more specifically about one type of administrative data, hospitalizations. I chose this because it's the most commonly available administrative data. Statewide hospitalization data sets can be used to provide local level estimates of hospitalization frequency based on ICD coding. The denominator for hospitalization rates is available from Census or the American Community Survey. Some of its limitations, however, are that some information is poorly recorded, like cost or race. Hospitalizations are severe events and therefore using this data will not reflect less severe diseases. It will be inappropriate to use hospitalization data to estimate the prevalence of a disease outcome. Finally, the data is event-based, not person-based, in most cases. This means that the data will tell you the number of hospitalizations, but not the number of people hospitalized. People can be hospitalized more than once in the data set, and you may not be able to determine how often that happens. Let's take a break here and pick up in the next presentation more regarding the first steps using data in public health.